Hi guys, welcome to The Attic. My name is Mark Jago. I'm a philosophy professor in the UK. Today we are continuing our philosophy glossary, trying to explain some of the tricky terms that crop up in philosophy. And today we're going to be focusing on three terms, necessity, contingency, and possibility. Okay, so all of these terms are related. They are what's called modal terms. That kind of means different modes of truth, okay? So if we think about a truth or a falsehood, there's different ways or different modes of its being true. It might be a necessary truth. It might be a contingent truth, okay? So what does that mean? A necessary truth is a truth that has to be true, okay? It's something that couldn't possibly be false. Examples of that from mathematics, one plus one equals two. It's not just that it happens to be that when you add one thing to another thing, you get two of them. Things have to be that way. There's just no way of avoiding that truth. Plenty of other sources of necessary truths, though. Perhaps lots of truths of metaphysics are necessary truths. So perhaps it doesn't just happen to be that I am identical to myself. I have to be identical to myself. I, I couldn't have been anybody else. Perhaps you might think if God exists, then God is a necessary existent. That is, God couldn't have failed to have existed. Or perhaps you think if God doesn't exist, then God is a necessary non-existent. Or rather, it's necessary that God doesn't exist. OK, so you would be saying that it doesn't just happen to be the case that God doesn't exist, if that's what you think. You're also saying there couldn't possibly have been such a being as God in existence. So the question of whether God exists on this kind of way of thinking would be a necessary truth or falsehood, depending on which way it goes. So that's necessary truth. The opposite to that is contingency. So when we're talking about contingency, we're talking about a truth or falsehood which could have gone the other way. So a necessary truth has to be true. A contingent truth, by contrast, is a truth that could have been false. OK, so I'm sitting here right now. It's true that I'm sitting here right now, but it's a contingent truth. I could have been doing something else right now. That's a contingent truth. A contingent falsehood is something that's false, but could have been true. So in explaining all of these ideas, we're looking at possibility. OK, possibility just means, well, it's something that could have been. It's something that might have been. Typically, when we're talking about these terms, when we say that something could have been the case or might have been the case, we're not talking in epistemic terms. That is, I'm not saying, oh, yeah, for all I know, it might have been. We're talking in metaphysical terms. The world really could have been like that. OK, so I'm sitting here right now. If you ask me, am I sitting here? I don't say I might be. I say, yeah, I am. But it's still contingent because I could possibly have been doing something else right now. Even though I know I'm sitting here, I could have been doing gardening or working or something like that. OK, so it's still a contingent truth because I could possibly have been doing something else. So it's not about knowledge. Typically, when we're using these terms, we're talking about the way the world really has to be or the way the world really could have been. OK, so I just hinted about how these modal terms are interconnected. And in fact, we can define some of them in terms of the others. So, for instance, suppose we took possibility as our basic concept, that is, the world really could have been this way. Then we can say that something is necessary, like a proposition is necessary, if it couldn't possibly have been false. So it's necessarily true if it couldn't possibly have been false, or it's necessarily false if it couldn't possibly have been true. Something is contingent, it's contingently true, if it could have possibly been false. And it's contingently false if it could have possibly been true. OK, so we can understand contingency and necessity in terms of possibility, but we can also understand possibility in terms of necessity. OK, so what is it for something to be possible? Well, it's for its opposite, its negation, not to be necessary. OK, so why is it possible that I could have been standing right now? Because it's not necessary that I'm sitting down in this chair. What does contingency mean on this view? It's just that it's not necessary. So these are interconnected concepts because we can define any of them in terms of the other ones. OK, that's kind of nice. OK, so I hope you found this helpful. If you did, do me a favour, give the video a thumbs up. That really helps me out. Going to be doing plenty more philosophy glossary coming up soon. So if you want to hear more of that, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon to get notifications. Thank you very much for watching this far. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you back here soon.